Okay, what you see here is um, it just blew a shocky apart. I've been smelling this burning smell for a while and been kept, kept on check and see what it was. Couldn't find anything. I uh, just went over a bit of a uh, few of the uh, crack uh, washouts there and just heard a crack. Burning smell again, pulled over the side, and yeah, that's it. Uh, so that's got to slow me down a bit. I'm going to have to try and get this bastard off and uh, crawl on back up about another 7k to Somerset. I have to just take it slow because I've got only one shock on the side now, so the others are probably pretty hot too. You can see there, extent of the damage, pop straight out the bastard. I might have to get a hacksaw, cut cut through that up the top and maybe take that nut off. It should be okay then. The others seem to be holding up okay still. Old man Emi they are. I'll get to work. Okay, <clears throat> this is the result. Uh, I've done about 1800 k's since cans. Um, they've, they've been pretty damn good so far. I haven't, didn't notice too much of a, a change in my ride. Uh, I guess it's, it's just time to go. So I have to get a, a few more now. Next time I hit cans. Like, well, this kind of crap can happen on the Cape, so. It's all good though. With the shock removed, I attempted to reinsert the dislocated spring. Initial attempts failed, so I switched to a high lift jack to get high enough clearance. I used fencing wire to tie the spring to the top mount to stop it popping out again. With the missing shock, the rear end bounced around terribly on the corrugations, so I kept my speed below 40 kilometers an hour so as not to lose control. Once reaching Seisha, I discovered the bolts on the A-frame had rattled loose this could have been catastrophic if they fell out. Despite the shocks being reasonably new, still within warranty kilometres, this failure occurred. It was a three day wait for a new shock to be flown up from Melbourne. If you have the available payload and room, carrying one spare front and rear shock, if travelling in really remote locations, may be recommended.